Welcome to a T20 World Cup preview um, for Don News English. With me is uh, Ahmed uh, Khwaja from uh, the UAE, and I'm uh, Saadi Reza here in Dallas, Texas, and we preview the upcoming uh, T20 World Cup, um, Cricket World Cup, being held in the U.S. and um, and the Caribbean. Uh, one of the matches, one set of matches, uh, will, of course, be here locally in Dallas. So let's preview this World Cup that's starting, actually, um, uh, in a few days. I, I think June 1st is the first match, uh, U.S.-Canada here in Dallas um, on a sweltering Friday night, 7.30. I will try and be there, but we'll see. Um, it's it's interesting, you know, that the fact that the World Cup is coming to the U.S., uh, this is not a natural market for the U.S. Um, MLC started last year as T20 franchise, but I think the focus is very different. Um, let's just dive right into it. Obviously, we'll go straight into Group A, India, Pakistan, part of that group. Um, and and the format of this is uh, four groups of five, top two teams in each group go to the Super 8s. They're split into two, and then uh, top two go into the semis. Um, clearly, uh, the ICC wanted one guaranteed India-Pakistan match. This is the easiest way to do it. The uh, other teams in the group, the US, Canada, and Ireland, are, are not really expected to make uh, the Super 8s. Uh, but Emmett, what do you think um, about Group A in general, about this India-Pakistan match that's going to happen on June 9th in New York City? Or, or actually, technically, in uh, Hicksville, Long Island, uh, a suburb of New York City? Well, it's a miracle how the ICC always managed to somehow get India-Pakistan in the same group. It just happens again and again and again. I don't know how it happens. It must be a miracle from the Almighty. But yes, we will be facing off against India in the group stage once again. And of course, well, the US just beat Bangladesh in a T20I game very recently. So I think they have a better than average team, I would say, for what would be an associate nation. Of course, then Ireland, well, they gave us a tough time in the recent tour. So I expect it to be a competitive game. And Canada are not a bad team at all. So overall, of course, you do expect India-Pakistan to do the business. But I think the T20 World Cup we've seen over the years, there are a few surprises. We saw Ireland beat England in the last T20 World Cup. We saw Zimbabwe beat us, which is perhaps not much of a surprise for many. We knew that we had that impending doom. Of course, the Netherlands knocked over South Africa in that miraculous morning. So you never know. I think there might be a few slips and surprises. But overall, yes, you do expect India-Pakistan to top the group. India versus Pakistan, that's a very interesting question. We don't have the best T20i squad in, this, in the world either. India have a few questionable batters in their side. And of course, their bowling is very weak with some key injuries to the likes of Mohammad Shami in particular. But I think it'll be a very balanced game. And perhaps India has the upper edge because they've come off a very tough season of IPL. Their players are well attuned to the T20 over format. And of course, their batting is pretty overpowered as it is. But Pakistan, we've got the fast bowlers. Haris Rof is fit. We've got Mohammad Amir back in our fold as well. Shaheen Shah Afridi and Naseem Shah are also there. They might provide that cutting edge. But it does feel that Pakistan are lacking behind the times in terms of the T20 prowess. I think uh, the fact that there's five teams instead of four make it less likely that uh, you'll have one of these minnows sort of uh, or associate teams uh, get into the uh, super eights. I think if if it was four teams or four, uh, you know, one upset and you could be um, you could be potentially out. I just don't see uh, two teams, two associate teams beating the likes of of the big countries. If you look at Group B, for example, it's mostly England, Australia, Australia. Group C. Uh, has a little bit more flair to it with New Zealand, West Indies, and of course Afghanistan. You could easily see any one of those three teams, and and same thing with Group Four, um, with uh, South Africa, Sri Lanka, and Bangladesh. Even though uh, Bangladesh, of course, lost to the U.S. in Houston uh, this past weekend in their uh, warm-up matches, they were actually supposed to have warm-up matches yesterday here in Dallas, uh, in the Dallas Stadium. But we had storms in the area, so those matches oh. were canceled. There's actually a they put up a big massive uh, video screen and that got damaged as well so i don't know if that's going to be up and replaced in time uh but we'll see um real quick uh the current holders obviously of the t20 world cup are, are england but also let's also quickly talk about the current holders of the odi world cup which is australia they're in the same group uh we saw in the current ipl um you know, certainly travis head uh cummins and stark uh they were all in rare form uh, obviously uh, Stark and Cummins teams reached played a played a final um, as the Travis he Travis heads. Uh, do you see Australia as a um, 
favorite in there with uh, India, England, and uh, with India and England? Uh, one of those I three think teams? That, yeah, I think they'll definitely be in the mix because, like you mentioned, they just come a very lengthy, come off a very lengthy IPL season. Pat Cummins had great success. Travis Head was outstanding for most of the IPL. Unfortunately, fell away in the final playoff stage. And, of course, Mitchell Stark rediscovered his form. Incredible spell in the IPL playoffs. Two game-changing spells, in fact. And, of course, Marcus Stoinis, he also hit a 100 yep. in the IPL this season. And Cameron Green played relatively well for RCB as well. So, they're nicely attuned. David Warner's form may be a bit questionable. He was sidelined for the second half of the IPL. Unfortunately, Jake Frazier McGurk has not managed to force his way into the 15-man squad for Australia. Otherwise, the way he was batting in the IPL, he looked very, very dangerous indeed. I think they've missed a trick by not including him in the 15 proper. Glenn Maxwell was absolutely wretched. He couldn't bat. He couldn't contribute at all with the bat in the IPL. So that is a concern for them. But they've got so many quality all-rounders. Cameron Green, you've got Glenn Maxwell, you've got... Uh, Marcus Stoinis as well in good form as well. So they're a very all-rounder heavy squad. That may be a bit of an Achilles heel, maybe that middle order. But when you have Travis Head, David Warner, Mitchell Marsh up top and that very settled looking fast bowling lineup of Cummins, Hazelwood and Stark and Adam Zampa, he's a brilliant bowler in the wide performance. I think Australia will certainly perhaps not be red hot favourites, but they will certainly be in the mix. But of course, and of course, we know that they're a tournament-tested team. They have the medal to win. Uh, let's quickly come to defending champions Josh Josh Butler's England. Um, some controversy <laughs> over them pulling their players out of the IPL to play uh, versus the rain um, in <laughs> Pakistan last week. Uh, clearly, maybe not as good as uh, in previous years, but still a team that you can't take for granted. Um, let's quickly touch upon England. How do you think England will do? Well, they've seamlessly replaced the likes of Alex Hales and Ben Stokes who were on their last legs in the T20 format. Will Jacks was outstanding in the IPL for RCB. He perhaps the discovery of the tournament. Phil Salt was dominant. He's unlucky to miss out on an IPL winner's medal. He was outstanding for Kolkata Knight Riders. Johnny Bairstow looks past it, but still he can provide that experience and that big hitting ability against spin. And Jofra Archer, as we saw in the Pakistan series, is back. Fully fit, rearing to go. They have Mark Wood as well. So, of course, you have the Sam Curran. You have the all-round option of him and Chris Jordan, Moeen Ali, Adil Rashid. Still competing hard, still playing well at the top level. So, England look as overpowered as they ever were. And I dare say they're even better than 2022 now. Let's quickly go to two-time champion West Indies. This is a home tournament for them. Um not the same white ball success recently. Of course, they didn't qualify for Champions Trophy, which will be had next year in Pakistan. They didn't qualify for the ODI World Cup. But can you can you ever discount them in home conditions? I think they will be a very dangerous side, in it, but they have a pretty tricky group with Afghanistan and New Zealand in there as well. Afghanistan, I think they will be pretty good in this T20 World Cup. They're well honed now, well seasoned. They've got that spin trio, the likes of Noor Ahmed Mujib and of course Rashid Khan in there. The batting, as we saw, performed heroics in the ODI World Cup. Perhaps they're lacking a few hitters. They might still be relying on the likes of Muhammad Nabi and Hazratullah Zazai to get them through in those quick fire uh, early starts. Rahmanullah Gurbaz coming off an IPL successful campaign. Didn't do much in the playoff stage for KKR, replacing Phil Salt, but we've seen in the World Cup he's a quality bat. He's Played well against Pakistan as well. We remember that fantastic ODI 100 he got, uh, he got against us in Hambantota. So I think they're a dangerous side. New Zealand, they're a bit of a question mark, but we know they know how to play well in these multi-nation ICC tournaments. So they'll be up there. And you're talking about West Indies, Nicholas Poran, Shimran Hetmai, Andre Russell, who was in tremendous form with this IPL. He's looking fully fit. He's bowling quick. He's batting better than he ever was and a factor in the field as well. So I think the form and experience of Dre Russ plus their overpowered batting lineup may cover for some of their weaknesses in the fast bowling department. Let's see. I do expect the West Indies to have a good T20 campaign. I'll bring it back to Pakistan as we close out. Obviously not the best warm-up campaign. They've had a bunch of matches washed out. They were trying to get the right combinations. Probably don't have enough data to analyze it now. Do you expect uh, a uh, barber to come in one down and Syme to to open? Uh, given the fact that in if you look at the PSL, uh, Syme certainly added a different dimension um, with his bowling that he brings. Uh, where do you think that'll sort of um, even out? 
Well, that's a very good question. How much rope are Pakistan willing to give Saim Ayub? We've seen he's not really set the T20I circuit alight. He had a major opportunity against the Kiwis. He didn't quite deliver in this England series. Of course, it's been rained out quite heavily, but he's flattered to deceive so far at the highest level. Of course, he is very talented. He's the best we've got. But I do feel that they're running out of patience now with him and Azam Khan as well, who hasn't really stepped up to the mark. Yes, you've done well at the franchise league level. But when does that translate to the international level? When do you do it for Pakistan? When do you do it when you have the yellow star on your shirt? I think Saim Ayub is in very serious danger of getting dropped. They have backed him a fair deal. And even the composition of the squad, there really isn't that outstanding replacement. Maybe you've got Osman Khan on the bench. Even Fakhar Zaman has been adjusted into the playing 11th. So that just shows the paucity of batting options that Pakistan really have for this format. Of course, we could have gone with the likes of Sahib Zada Farhan or Salman Ali Agha, but eventually they didn't. But that just shows that we, we are behind the times when it comes to intentful batting in T20Is. And of course, uh, Azam does have the CPL experience. Last question. Um, Obviously, in uh, the IPL, it sort of reset what we expect for scoring. What do you think the pitches in the U.S. and the Caribbean will do? Do you think that be they they will bring down the scoring a little bit more to that 190, 200 range, or do you expect a lot more 220 plus scores? Well, we're going to have drop in pitches in the U.S., so you would yeah. expect them to be tailor made for the T20 format: high scoring, flat, good bounce, good carry. But of course, it is a mystery, and of course, like you mentioned, the overhead conditions right now in Dallas. Uh, not favorable for cricket. So that could add a bit of a, you know, a twist, a spanner into the works. But in the Windies, I would expect if anything else, they'll be flat because you've got very small grounds as well. So high scoring games and maybe just assisting a bit of spin around Guyana and the other parts in Jamaica and Trinidad. Perhaps you will get some better pitches for bowling. But overall, I think it's going to be a T20 World Cup chock full of runs and new heights and new records being set in the batting department. Should be fantastic. We'll be bringing you lots of daily coverage and insights and analysis. Please join us. Thank you very much.